Oh, that's interesting that it showed up that way. So, you'll see that that looks like a uh, mobile device. It's because it's a fully reflex, uh, responsive design. Pulls up on any mobile device as well. So, hi, sorry. My name is Nick Howell. I'm the tech evangelist here at Cohesity. I know many, many familiar faces here, and for those who are online, thanks for joining us. Um, this is our UI. You open up, you get into a... Uh, Looks like Johnny Five on the screen there. Johnny <laughs> <laughs> It's Arthur D2 camera. Right. So as you'll see, we get many. Uh, we have. Uh, it's a very tiled interface. It's very responsive. We want to add to this as we go forward. So as a startup, we're, or as a starting out, where these are the things we want to show show you right on the front page, all of the things that are most important to you. So we're going to give you an indication right away of you know some quick stats. We're going to hit you right up front with that. Uh, we're going to hit you with any alerts, whether they're system-wide, particularly related to any jobs, and uh, any storage metrics that you'd like to see as far as utilization and such. Um, the numbers uh, as far as performance, jobs? we literally... I'm sorry? Jobs? I, I haven't heard anything about jobs. We'll I get mean, there. You... We'll get there. Uh, so it's basically this gives you an overview of your performance. Forgive the lack of information. We just fired this guy up uh, this early first right around noon today, I guess. So it's been ingesting a bunch of data all afternoon since you guys have been here. So for this portion, um, to just to highlight some of the platform specifics, I want to go through and take a look at uh, the way you manage the cluster. Uh, I think a lot of times that infrastructure management, I'm one of the old dinosaurs that just absolutely loves infrastructure. I think it's a lost art. So to simplify a lot of that stuff, uh, if you think about almost like the Russian dolls that collapse on each other, we think about things that way. So you have a cluster that collapses into uh, partitions, that collapse into view boxes, what we call a view box. You could relate to it similar to uh, a volume or some other layer like that where you assign storage services and apply policy. Uh, and inside of that, we do uh, views, what we call a view. So that's going to be a multiple versions of either an NFS export or an SMB share or things, other things of that nature, HDFS, etc. So let's take a look at the actual nodes. Oh. Log in. So if we look at the cluster, we can get a full view of our nodes, the current version that they're running uh, of the software. Uh, and in a minute, I'll show you how we, we go through and we actually add a node. We're going to add one, let that run, and we'll come back to it in the next demo window. All right. So here's a listing of our nodes, the IP addresses, what partition they're a part of. Um, and let's actually take a look at that. So partitions. This is an interesting one. So when you get into situation, Can you add a single node in that machine? Mm -hmm. So I can, by the fifth node, just... Uh with a few disks on the front end and yes. one node. Okay. So the bare minimum is three to absolutely start with, uh, but from that point you can incrementally add single nodes. Oh, sure. Okay, good. It's just once you get to four, new chassis, node, 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 and it goes like that. Right. As many as you want to add. <coughs> from a partition perspective, let's say, so if what we're going to show you is the um, what we're actually looking here, that uh, we go to nodes. Am I on the right one? I am not on the right one. Let's, that one's better. Here's our 32 node cluster. Well, it's 31 currently. We're going to add the 32nd, right? So this one has a little bit more performance on it. Um, as they were talking about earlier, this is the latest we've gotten to test. Sorry, manufacturing can't really keep up with demand, but we'll get there. Uh, we'll get there as many as we can as soon as we possibly can. We definitely want to do more than 32. But again, like I was saying, very tiled interface. We uh, would log in again. Time's out. If we look at all the individual nodes here, we get all the information and the breakdown of what releases they're running, whether they're active, whether they're upgrading, whether they're doing any kind of uh, background maintenance or anything like that is all going to be displayed here, right? Through here, and when you're managing your nodes, we automatically go and we discover nodes. So this is not mutually exclusive to this cluster. You can have multiple clusters within your environment, and there can be multiple nodes that you can add to different clusters. So for example, the one we're going to add here today is this guy, because we know it's on the right version of the code that matches this one. We also have another cluster in the environment here. Uh, there's one of our QA clusters, and it's also giving us the opportunity to add those nodes to this cluster. So it's very flexible in the sense that uh, of what you want to what you want to add and how you want to build your clusters out. And I love the simplicity of this. So let's go ahead and let's add this node to uh, to this cluster. Ten, thirty, whoop, one mistake there. 10, 2, 34, 62. And we'll just assign it to the cluster. All right, so we'll come back and check on that. Let's see if it added it right away. Not quite. So while we're going through that stuff, let's take a look at partitions. 
very easy to go through. You can create individual partitions. This is where it starts getting a little bit fun. You can get into carving out hard carving parts of the cluster to do departmental or, or organizational kind of segregation between that. I, I liken partitions to the physical version of segregation or separation in your environment or in your cluster versus the view boxes, which are going to do a lot more logical separation of workloads and where the data is at. Are your logins multi tenant aware or partition aware? I believe that's on your logins partition aware? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, it is. So you can go in and assign, as Johnny was talking about, you can assign VIPs or multiple VIPs to a node. Uh, you can even assign those into a partition. So that's where you can s begin to segregate those out is more than that. As I was saying, view boxes is kind of the next layer. This is where we start having a lot of fun with uh, deduplication. This is where you'll assign more of your storage services. Uh, we'll have more of that available in the UI uh, going forward. But a view box, if you think of it like a volume in the sense is the way it kind of relates to that. Uh, we are able to do our DDoP assignments, and we can contain, we choose which uh, partition we want to contain a view box inside of. View boxes are essentially the targets for which you uh, uh, target your data, whether you're going to write to SMB shares, whether you're going to target backups. All right. So let's go back and take a look at that node. What was it? 62? So you mentioned SMB shares. I assume oh. you can connect that up to Active Directory. Could you? Uh, it's getting there. I think that's uh, that part's still coming. It's very, very close to being done. But yeah, right. that's that's assumed. Yeah. And is the plan to be able to do, um, say, multiple app Active Directories? So you have different SMB shares with Ooh, different that's a Active good Directories. I don't know that one. Support for multiple Active Directory Active Directory domains. Yeah, that Active Directory is also coming. Yeah, but uh, the specific question was around uh, multiple Active yes, Directory yes, domains. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So or multi right. tenancy SIFs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's multi yeah. so well, which, effect, like which also means that, that for SMB you have to present it you have exactly. to present the cluster well you have to present the cluster as multiple server names. Right. Mm -hmm. With probably with multiple IP addresses. That Correct. So each but the the VIPs that Johnny talked about go on a partition. So VIPs are partition specific. And so when you map a host name to a bunch of VIPs, it's it becomes partition specific. WIP. And some people that do that you require a different network subnet for each the, the, what you like which is terrible. So you'll be able to assign an, a, a separate Active Directory domain on a per partition basis right. is the plan. That's right. Cool. Well, and unfortunately, Johnny Fiverr is covering it up for you guys on the screen, but you guys on the live, sh screen sh live stream should be able to see it. Uh, it's down here at the bottom, already added, already participating in the cluster. Uh, the difference between what we just did and a maybe out-of-date software version, it's very unlikely. You guys are storage guys, you know this. The software that you get with a new controller is not usually the up-to-date stuff or what matches with your, your current systems. So the whole process is automatic. Uh, once you pop a node in, you go in, you discover, you add it. You're going to see that uh, it'll be listed in red with what the version has. It's going to do an update of the software. It's going to reboot the node, and it'll come back up and join, be joined part of the thing, part of the cluster. The whole process takes five minutes or less. So it's very, very fast. It's in near instant if the software versions are the same. So that one that I just added is already participating in the cluster. So I got distracted a couple of seconds. Uh, and you add the node, and then it starts automatically to rebalance all the cluster. Yes. So once it begins to participate in the, um, uh, in the cluster, <laughs> there's a couple of things that happen in the background. One, we're going to make a copy of the metadata over to the flash for, for, the, for DD purposes and tracking, et cetera. What happens if the new node is much faster, or bigger, or whatever than the old node? So next generation, you will have uh, 10, 15, 16 terabyte drives, 20 terabyte yeah, drives. Yeah, so easy question to answer is what if it has more capacity? Well, the, our self-healing process that Johnny talked about uh, automatically says, oh, well, that node has more capacity, so it gets more data. So basically, the what rebalancing not, will take care of it. What about not just capacity, but yeah. drive types? Scale drives would def definitely have different characteristics than. Yes. Typical. So uh, if it's an inherently different drive, then we support what are called tiers, storage tiers. So we put it in a different tier. And then we kind of define through policies what kind of stuff goes in that tier. So yes, we support all that. But if it's relatively similar, mm -hmm. then it's in the same tier of storage. And then the rebalancing kind of works between those tiers. Uh, and lastly, we're, I mean, we're running pretty tight on time here, so I want to blow through some of these. Just uh, we, we do full performance monitoring here live on the box. 
Uh, to me, there's a difference between monitoring reports, monitoring being real-time, reports being kind of after the fact to see, to go and do some investigation. Uh, these graphs fully support you zoom in, so you can zoom in on a particular graph, uh, see a particular point in time of where something may have happened, a job failed, a spike in performance, etc. cetera. Uh, very interactive graphs. I'm, I'm a really big fan of these personally. Uh, full date range and searchability. Of course, we don't have any for tomorrow yet. You can break it down to seven days, 30 days, etc. cetera. Uh, and you can even, if you have multiple clusters, you can look at different clusters. If you have multiple view boxes, uh, your containers in there, you can certainly go in and look at specific ones as well. What's the granularity on that over time? <coughs> Good question. Granularity on the performance? Um, that you see here or? Um, 30 days, you know, am I looking at per minute? Meg per megabytes per second and you can, I can actually expand. Uh, so let's say it's showing you 30 days, you could kind of tune in. Uh, How long do you keep the data for then? Uh, it's, again, policy-based. Uh, I'm not sure what the default is. I think probably 30 days or so. Yeah, I, th I believe it's the 30 days as well, the, the max of the button there. Do you, you roll, that, roll that up over time, or uh, is that... So I think what you guys are driving at is, are these historical logs kept for a long period of time? I don't believe so. I believe it's 30 days. I believe we're looking at some options on the roadmap to do uh, an export of some sort to, so that if you do want to keep them or save them off somewhere. Yeah, I, I just got an update uh, that we keep the data for one year. Actually. One year. Okay, cool. Nice. But so at that go. same level of granularity. We keep all the data. This is a stats data. Cool. Cool. So let's look at a view box real quick. This is one of the, uh, the more interesting things where we do some configuration here. We'll put it in the KCD partition, click OK. And now with this view box, basically what we're designing, what we're just deciding there is uh, how much space we have available to us, what kind of dedupe we're going to do. By default, you saw that both the post regular dedupe as well as inline was selected. So this would make an excellent place to, uh, when I go to create a backup job, which I'll show you guys in the next demo session, uh, as a place to target this so that all streaming data that's coming in from backups is deduplicated. Any questions around the platform or cluster management, uh, administration, things like that? Points. I have a question, just to understand better. So you, you have this cluster, and the customer installs it. Okay, do you have customer asking different clusters, and if so, can you migrate uh, LANs or data sets from a cluster to another? Does it make sense? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. I, so I, are our customers asking for multiple clusters yeah. with different UIs? Uh, well, so far, the customers want to consolidate their secondary storage, so they actually want one, one cluster so they can manage it effectively. But uh, let me try to understand more about uh, your no, question. No, I am just asking if you have customer asking for more than one cluster, just... Well, they ask for more than one of these boxes. In fact, no, we just no, got no, up here No, 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 one of these boxes. Yeah. Different clusters. Different clusters. So different I guess domains. eventually we probably will. Uh, maybe different departments, they don't want to have a single admin managing it. They will probably say, okay, well, give us two different clusters. So eventually we will, but right now, the, uh, the customers we have, we one have cluster. A one, one cluster. Okay. So VBOX is on, on creation, it's not holding any capacity. It's not reserving any capacity. Uh, no, it's not reserving anything, no. It just, it knows what it has available to it based on the participation in the cluster. So you, are, you say, are you asking within a view box, can you set a hard reserve of yeah, almost like a thick provisioning kind of thing? Yeah. No, I don't believe so. It's unnecessary in this kind of, in a distributed system like this. 